So, you know, prime focus was business. Mm. I still remember that, you know, we used to bring our customers, our so-called CXOs, CEOs, vice presidents and presidents down to meet him. And we used to have those half an hour chats in the corporate office mm. and we used to be all around business. All around business. Technology used to come in at the lame end of it. Mm. It was a pure business. Yeah, in fact, in Infosys also, uh, historically, he has been a very strong sales guy. He was heading the sales for us. Yeah. Like All right, hi everyone, welcome on board. Many people have asked me to ask me what is this? What is analytics? What is blockchain? What is AI? Kya hai? Today, I am sitting inside Four School of Business and with the Professor Rajneesh. Hi, sir, welcome on board. Hi, Rahul, how are you? I am very amazing. Ho. Sir is the Dean of... Uh, sir, what do you say? Corporate? Dean of Corporate Relations. Rahul. Dean of Corporate Relations. It's so, so amazing. I am humbled to have you on board. He happens to be from NIT Hamirpur and also finished the MBA in 1995-1997 from IMT Gadiwal. Sir, I was, I was a kid, sir, that time. Literally, sir, in school. That's why my hair are all <laughs> salt and pepper. In fact, I should not even say salt and pepper. It is all salt and no pepper. <laughs> He's an amazing human being. He's worked very closely with Nandan Nilkani and uh, with Infosys for nearly 10 years in one of the heads. Sir, everybody has got deep respect. All his students also love it. Yeah. And um, he was instrumental in introducing all these technologies in curriculum. Sir, ask you a question. I am Scar, top business school ka curriculum old. Hai. But when you study blockchain, you will understand the story of But more importantly, sir, I am excited about the Nandan Nilkani thing. What was it all about? Well, uh, let me put it like this. You know, traditionally, I am not a traditional academician in that sense. You know, I spent almost 20 years in the corporate. I was there with Infosys for more than a decade. And when I came over here to Four School of Management, which was again almost a decade back, 2013 was the year. And just before coming in over here, I had worked very closely with Nandan. Nandan happened to be my reporting boss also. I used to work in the head office. Like direct DR? DR, okay. Wow. And having said that, you know, Nandan was a guy who was uh, in a different league altogether. You know, the reason why India is getting transformed yeah. today is all about, you know, because of the India stack that he has brought in, because of UPA that he has brought in, so on and so forth. And obviously, if I'm coming in from Infosys, the only thing that I would know is technology. Mm -hmm. So technology is what I brought in out over here. Mm -hmm. And you know, being a typical MBA graduate, if you ask me to code, etc., no, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm not a techie to that extent. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm a business guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so way back in the year 2013, and because uh, Infosys was an organization like that, Nandan Nilankarni's outlook was like that, I still vividly remember that artificial intelligence and machine learning was a concept that we started teaching in 2013. 2014, when people did not even know much about the concept called Bitcoin, we started teaching it out over here. Is it? So, 2014, when we were talking about Bitcoin, when we were talking about blockchain in four school of management, people did not have a clue. People did not understand what is mining, so on and so forth. Wow. When we were speaking about artificial intelligence and machine learning way back in the year 2013, people did not have a clue about it. Okay, And it has come a long way since then. Uh, it has come a long way. In fact, uh, I feel very happy to tell you that I have represented uh, four at a couple of CI events also in between. And our alumni to that extent, you'll find them in very pivotal roles in this space, especially blockchain and fintech. Really? We have got a lot of alums who are there in NPCI today, the National Payment Corporation of India. Okay, They are the guys who are driving this uh, fintech revolution, the so-called... Uh, payment revolution in our country. Okay, We have our alum called uh, Kush. He's there in Pine Labs as the chief business officer. Again, one of those things. Yeah. We have another alum called uh, Raj Fanish Narayanam. He happens to be the founder and CEO of Zagal. And they are again into fintech. In fact, nice. he's one alum who just a month back gave us almost something like 10 crore. Okay. So, Coming back to it, when it comes to blockchain and fintech, yes, we teach them. Do we teach them technology only for the sake of technology? No, we mm. do not do that. We have to tie it up with business, right? Got it. Today, we talk about fintech, mm. right? With the finance in the beginning and with the tech at the end. Yeah. It's not the other way around, tech fin. Mm. So, our focus is fintech, not tech fin. And that's the way to look at it. Got okay. it. People talk about, you know, IT projects, transforming business, corporates, so on and so forth. Today, I think all of us need to appreciate the fact that you forget about IT projects which are transforming corporations, right? Today, the amount of technology, fintech, blockchains, you know, uh, 
so on and so forth, whatever that you see through things like uh, uh, Aadhaar, through things like NPCI, yeah. so on and so forth, they have transformed the entire country. We are talking mm. about population scale. True that. We, have, we are talking about, you know, something which is in excess of 3 trillion getting transformed. So, that's a huge thing and that's the way we like to look at uh, fintech, not from a technology perspective alone, but more from a business perspective, more from an application perspective, more from transforming the society at a population scale. So, that's hmm. the way we look at Got it. Got it. So, I'm just curious to know, what do you teach? These subjects were not there when I was doing my MBA 2009. Mm -hmm. They're all new things. I've read on my own. But as a as an academic practitioner of fintech or blockchain, um, if you were to explain us to a layman like what fintech is and uh, do you think it's the future? It's already there. I mean, calling it a future. But do you think it's going to be getting more secure, it's going to be going uh, more deep and uh, India is already getting connected to the hinterland to all the rustic area as well. What's, what's the future of this as well? But let's start. What is fintech? See, you know, let me put it like this. You know, finance and technology, if you ask me, they've always gone hand in hand, but the word called fintech was never coined. Mm. Okay, it never got coined. And uh, the reason I say finance and technology they have always gone hand in hand is because, you know, uh, if you go back even to the first set of un cables, undersea cables which were laid between London Stock Exchange and New York Stock Exchange were more for connecting the two bourses that we have. Right. Okay. Right. So, has finance and technology been always away? No. They have been together. Mm. Okay. Uh, Nasdaq has been there for donkey number of years now. Right. Uh, we talk about the ATM revolution. Okay. Uh, ATMs have been there for so long. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But this word called fintech never got coined. Mm. Okay. And you know, the way I look at the genesis is that way back in the year 2008 when we had this uh, global meltdown. Yeah. Okay. When the banks came down, so on and so forth, the Lehman brothers went down, yeah, so yeah. on and so forth. And obviously, you know, if I have to ask you, Rahul, what is it that you would have done at that time as a bank? Probably, the government oh. also would have told you, look here, get your story in place. Yeah. These so, kind of things should not happen. Yeah. Your focus has to be in compliance. Right. right. Um, as a side note, sir, mm -hmm. I saw the Lehman crisis in my G office when I was doing the internship. Yeah. So, what I, was, what I had to do is was secure my PPO. <laughs> 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 that was the time. Because I still remember it was the canteen and there was like, Big news, layman crisis, subprime. The pata nahi tha, what is kya hai? Mm. So it just came in, like, subprime yeah. was never a word. And I said, you have to get an internship, you have to get PPO, you have to get an internship, you have to get an internship, you have to get an internship. But that was the thought process. As, as a bank, I don't know, I don't know what I would be doing. Maybe you would have focused on compliance. Yeah. Right? Yeah. These kind of things should not have happened yeah. again. So on and so forth. Yeah. And remember, we are talking about the year 2008. Right? 2000, around about the same time frame, we had iPhone coming in. Mm -hmm. yeah. We had 4G coming in. True. With the likes of Uber coming in. With the mm. likes of BNB coming in. In our country also, you had Olas of the Olas of the had, so on and yeah, so forth. Yeah. You know, so it's a very interesting paradox. On one side, here were these banks who had traditionally been very heavy on finance, on the very heavy on obviously they had to be heavy on finance. They were heavy on technology, okay, focusing on compliance. And on the other side, in the other industry. The entire customer experience was getting revolutionized. Mm. And all of a sudden, there was a big gap between BFSI and the other industries. Mm. The other industries had taken off in a different league altogether. And here were these banks down there still with the traditional technologies. Mm. And this gap obviously had to be bridged. Right? Mm. And who would bridge it? Technology was there. Yeah. Lots and lots of people got fired from the banks. Yeah. And if you get fired from a bank, what is it that you would do? Probably finance? Yeah, of course. That's, that's, what you, that's, that's what you know. Yeah. That's the only thing that you know. So, this folks okay, went into startups, mm. took cues from the other industries, which are very heavy on technology, so on and so forth. And all of a sudden, we had this revolution of fintech, which came up, which is mm. actually driven by startups and not by the heavy technology giants or by the big, big banks, yeah. which traditionally had been doing it. Got it. Right. And then, of course, when you have got startups, what you have on your side is innovation. Right. What you have on your side is speed. What you have on your side is a lot of, you know, uh, connectivity, so on and so forth. So, that's how the entire revolution wow. started. And after that, I think there has been 
uh, no turning around. And rest the second is thing is rest is history. Rest is history. And the other thing is, see, let us face it. You know, when this entire thing happened, that's one part of it. Okay. The second part is when we talk about blockchain, when we talk about Bitcoin, so on and so forth. Why did it come in the very first place? Now these banks, all these banks are about you know centralized authority. Yeah. Okay. And where did the centralized authorities took you? To Lehman Brothers. Oh. Why would you want to believe them? Yeah. Why yeah. would you want to believe them? You lost trust. And then if you are actually losing trust in centralized authorities, mm -hmm. whether you want to call them as banks, whether you want to call them as finance ministries, whether you want to call them as central banks, so on and so forth, what would you do? Mm -hmm. You are going for a decentralized model of trust. And that too in the very first place, this currency should not be controlled by a central authority yeah. and that is where bitcoin came in that is where blockchain came in because blockchain yeah. is all about decentralized trust True. had that probably 2008 thing not happened yeah whatever that we're seeing in terms of you know the bitcoin revolution the blockchain revolution the so-called fintech revolution would have never happened True. so blockchain though crypto trading was the next level i lost lost a lot of money I remember I started with um, 1 lakh rupees, mm -hmm. dad ko request karke, it was covid time, yeah. I was staying with my dad in Punjab, I am from Jalandhar, yeah. so my dad was like, kuch nahi rakhya, bekaar hai gaya, kuch nahi, he is a banker, mm -hmm. he said, kis cheez ke tumhe paise de rahe, kaha hai wo currency, kidhar hai, hum to loan lete hai, loan ko paise dete hai, interest leke, phir paise kamate hai, there are, there are papers to it, there are assets to it, there, kuch nahi aapne, and suddenly the crypto, I was making 30% every day, good, and uh, wo ek ka sir 15 lakh ho gaya, <laughs> और डैड बीएमडब्ल्यू लेनी है उनसी 35 लाख पे करेंगे वो गर्द बढ़ता है डैड बोले सब जीरो होगा निकाल ले पैसा एंड हो गया जीरो एंड हो गया जीरो राइट सो यू हैव टू फिगर आउट व्हेन टू एग्जिट द मार्केट आल्सो राइट एंड एट द सेम टाइम लेट मी वेरी वेरी ऑनेस्ट आई एम अ ग्रेट फैन ऑफ आई एम अ ग्रेट फैन ऑफ ट्रेडिंग इन क्रिप्टो करेंसीज नो आई एम नॉट ओके एंड दैट्स वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट थिंग व्हिच आई टेल इन द क्लास टू केयर Bitcoin, blockchain, blockchain is the key thing. Yes, Bitcoin happens to be the most famous use case of blockchain yeah. and probably the first use case of blockchain. Yeah. No two questions about it. But then there's a lot that a blockchain can do. Right. Otherwise, yeah. even, you know, a couple of weeks back, you know what happened to Sam Friedman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those kind of things will keep happening. True, true. So, so, so I guess that's the long and short of it. And yes, future is definitely so there. Blockchain future came is like, mujhe kabhi kabhi lagta sa, blockchain is a glorified IT or uh, IT security, let me call it. Mm -hmm. So, code them karte hai. It's a more secure code with their unique keys and everything, and um, which nobody can barge into. Mm -hmm. But have the tech key, sir. Nahi hai. It's Nahi all hai. about uh, human nature and psychology. It's all about trust. It's a way of implementing trust. At the end of the day, see, let her put it like this. You know, if you've got business and if you've got technology, hmm. you know, uh, business is the prime thing. Hmm. Technology enables this. Hmm, this is hmm. not the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That core gap which was there. Look here, I do not trust these so-called central authorities with my money. Hmm. Okay. Sometimes they'll come up with uh, money market interventions. Hmm. Sometimes they will play with CRR. Sometimes they will play with the statutory liquidity ratio. Sometimes uh, they are going to play with inflation. Hmm. Sometimes they'll print more money and in the process devaluation happens. Yeah. Right. So. The core thing was fundamentally that hmm. look here, there is a central authority which we are prone to getting manipulated by. Hmm. Okay, it was a solution to that. True. Okay, so I guess that is the that's a better way of looking at it. Hmm. That's lovely. Because or fintech also, as I said, tech is coming afterwards. Right. It's fintech, not tech fin. Kya baat hai? So as long as we keep that in mind, that's perfectly okay. We I did a podcast with the. Mm -hmm. Raj Shamani recently, in fact, so I was discussing the same thing. So, um, ed tech ka bhi same hai. People think it's like tech ed. Most of the tech ed companies, you know, fail because of this reason. Like, you need to be educator first. You need, you need to, be to be educator, educator first. first. And then the business comes, comes in first. At the end of the True. day, technology, I mean, if there's a dog called business, technology is the tail of the dog. Let's so true. Face it. <laughs> so true. Sir. It's not the other way around. <laughs> so true. So true. <laughs> Great, sir. I am really enjoying it, but I'm going to go back to the Nandan and Kani thing. Mm -hmm. How is he, sir, as a person? Amazing, out of the world, hardworking. Amazing guy, very, very hardworking, very, very street smart also, very, very ethical. Also. I mean, he was a great guy. I mean, he was a business guy, let me put it like this. Yeah. He was never a technology guy. Achha, oh. I mean, he, technology used to come in because he was in, in forces. In fact, let me correct myself. So, you know, prime focus was business. Mm. 
I still remember that, you know, we used to bring our customers, our so-called CXO, CEOs, vice presidents and presidents down to meet him. And used to have those half an hour chats in the corporate office hmm. and used to be all around business. All around business. Technology used to come in at the lame end of it. Hmm. He was a pure play business guy. In fact, in Infosys also, uh, historically, he has been a very strong sales guy. He was heading the sales for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a sales guy. He was a sales guy. And that too, a very good sales guy. And in an organization like Infosys, where you got... Uh, multi-million and sometimes even multi-billion uh, sales going on, you don't do those sales by glib talks. Mm. It's a very serious sale. Mm. It's a very serious sales pitch also, which is directed to the business. Superb. So I guess that is what it is. And he was God of it. Great. He was the God of it. I mean, uh, yes, I had the good fortune of working with him. And though, of course, he left Infosys a couple, and I continued in Infosys for a good many number of years after him also. But yeah. That's, That's the reason great. why he has transformed the country. Of course, sir, of course. All right, sir, um, these all kids are like 20, 21 year old and they're all preparing for CAT, ZAT. Kuch log interviews ki diary karein, kuch log SPG in Bombay mere school jayenge. Kuch log aapke school mein aapke yep. padhenge, four ke andar kuch IAMs jayenge. Any parting thoughts regarding technology, regarding fintech to all these people on the career front or kuch inko advice dena chate hai, sir? See, probably one advice which I would give is that, you know, just remember one thing that technology at the end of the day enables you. That's about it. Uh, so, Keep that in mind. And of course, these guys, they know, I mean, this is a digitally native generation. We don't have to tell them. They are it very well. Many. But yes, one thing is there for sure. And I have told this to many people that, you know, people say that uh, success, I, I remember traditionally, you know, uh, when I did my B-School, which was almost something like 20 to 5 years back, uh, people used to say that, you know, look here, success is not IQ alone. It has got an additional component called EQ and EQ standing for emotional quotient. But these days, if you ask me, I think that these days it is actually IQ plus EQ plus DQ. How does that uh, add up to IQ standing for in yeah. intelligent quotient, EQ standing for emotional Motion. quotient, and DQ standing for digital, digital quotient. quotient. So today it is IQ plus EQ plus DQ. That's the way to uh, you know look at things. Super and that's right. the way to succeed in business also. That's the way to succeed. Tech ko saath rakho, sir, Ramesh. Tech ko saath rakho. As I said, IQ plus EQ plus DQ. Do not forget the DQ. 33% is a big number. Yeah. All right, boys and girls. Hope you guys enjoyed this discussion. Thank you so much, Rajni, sir. Pleasure I really travel. enjoyed it. Drop in the comment section. Kya tum log bhi aise kuch roles jhund rahe ho? Fintech ke andar, blockchain ke andar, AI ke andar. Or what's your thought process on this? Or comment section ke andar baat hi karte hain. And um, do another like button here. And see you in the comments. Bye-bye. Take care.